First of all, I would like to thank the WHO for inviting me to take part in this important event. This book, The Evolving Threat of Antimicrobial Resistance, Options for Action, is a very welcome contribution to all who are eager to develop appropriate policies in this area. I'm very happy to see it being launched here today. The timing is very good too, not only due to the urgency of the problem, but also considering the ambitious WHO global plan now underway, which I believe could truly be informed by the content of this book. I'm the director of an independent global network called Action on Antibiotic Resistance, or REACT for short. This network was formed because many of us felt that antibiotic resistance had received way too little attention and visibility, despite the fact that it has pandemic proportions and poses such a very serious threat to patients and healthcare systems in all parts of the world. Until just recently, I was also the chairman of STRAMA, the Swedish Strategic Programme Against Antibiotic Resistance. Sweden has a long-standing tradition in this area. STRAMA is a national program against antibiotic resistance and was established in 1995. STRAMA is now part of the Swedish Institute for Infectious Disease Control and deals with antibiotic use and containment of antibiotic resistance. STRAMA facilitates an interdisciplinary and locally approved working model, ensuring involvement by all relevant stakeholders, including national and local experts and authorities. To make a long story short, STRAMA takes a top-down and a bottom-up approach to coordinate efforts to prevent antibiotic resistance and healthcare-associated infections. If I may, I would like to give just one example on an intervention area addressed by STRAMA. As many other countries, Sweden has had far too high consumption of antibiotics in the 80s and the beginning of the 90s. As you can see, the implementation of a concerted national policy to address the irrational use of antibiotics in the community has led to a significant reduction in antibiotics prescriptions, specifically in the younger age groups as seen on the top curve. And, as a matter of fact, among the youngest children, antibiotic prescriptions have been reduced by more than 50% without any measurable negative health consequences. As I just mentioned, I also lead the international network REACT. REACT is a small but unique organization which links a wide range of individuals, organizations and networks around the world, taking action to respond to antibiotic resistance. REACT works and acts in four major areas. Increasing the visibility of antibiotic resistance, working with evidence generation, support the development of national policy plans on antibiotic resistance and encouraging the development of new antibiotics. The title of the book being launched here today, and especially the latter part of the title, Options for Action, is what this is really about, action. However, we have all reacted very, very late. We have been trapped in a state of global self-deception, somehow thinking that there will always be another antibiotic around the corner when the older ones have been worn out. This is simply not the case. In addition to massive interventions regarding infection prevention and control, as well as a much more rational use of existing antibiotics, we also need new effective medicines. But the overall innovative capacity is low, and big and small pharmaceutical companies need to work in a much more open way in collaboration with the academic sector for the development of new antibiotics. However, in this endeavor, one very important aspect needs to be considered, and that is, how do we ensure the rational use of the end product? We simply cannot afford to make the same mistake again by letting a new precious drug flood in the market uncontrollably. It will be absolutely essential to formulate a system, preferably in the context of a global compact, where all key actors agree on the principles of controlled distribution and use while respecting the need for access to affordable antibiotics for everyone in need. Although the responsibility for action against antibiotic resistance ultimately lies with national governments, there falls a particular responsibility on rich countries to support the implementation of national policies and capacity building in low- and middle-income countries. Antibiotic res resistance actually threatens to undermine third-world development. Certainly rich countries and their development aid agencies must commit to this urgent issue and engage much more powerfully. I sincerely believe that the AMR book 
being presented here today provides excellent insights. The book contains concrete options for action within the main areas that need to be addressed. It can and should form the basis for action. I hope it will be helpful to national governments and regional bodies around the world as they develop and start implementing much needed policy plans on antibiotic resistance. Thank you very much for your attention.